Martin Oduro Teno. Pleasure to have you here at the back seat. Thank you, Sunny. Martin, I wanted to start with some years back you released your biography of your life. Um, and in that, there was a phrase that leaked out at me. That when you become a leader, you should leave your ego at the door. What did you mean by that? When I put that phrase in the book, uh, Sunny, it was really a, a reflection of uh, some of what I've seen in, in, in leadership, uh, where people, once they become leaders, uh, begin to really almost run roughshod over people, over other people. Uh, they think they are a, a small god unto themselves. Uh, and so on. And, and the point that I was making is that is that behaving that way and, and, and being so ego egotistic alienates people from you uh, and especially the people that you work with. Yes. Leadership is, um, I guess, it's just, you know, another, another role that people play. It doesn't make you uh, a different person. A different person. You know, it made total sense to me. But when I look around the landscape, uh, the corporate landscape, it's almost counterintuitive that you can be humble and leave your ego at the door. Because a lot of the corporate titans you see in the world are almost larger than life figures. They, they, they revel in being uh, very forceful and very dynamic and very, you know, there's a distance between you and me if you're my follower. And you seem to not uh, subscribe to that theory at all. As I grew up, I went through the the old leadership styles that you described and that was exactly what it was i mean you had to scream at people you had to put them down you had to show them their place and, and, and so on but as as generations uh, come and go uh, you obviously see that that doesn't uh, doesn't work anymore and what i also find is that uh, these days you know people move across jobs very very frequently yes uh, you only need to scream once and you don't have the guy anymore. Yes. You know, and yet you've got... Uh, <clears throat> this, these are people that you train, these are people that you spend a lot of money on. These are highly intelligent people at the same time. Martin, with all your achievements though, that is what's interesting. You have been CEO of a leading bank, you have had major positions in the banking industry, you've sat on many boards, you've um, had senior roles in the government, Despite all that, you retain this humble personality. What what makes you different? Because people, most people in your position are pretty, you know, uh, arrogant about it. <laughs> the same way I relate with my family, the same way I relate with my friends, uh, the same way that I, that I I come into leadership. It's the same, Martin. It's the same, Martin. It, it doesn't change, and and I haven't had reason to change. I haven't seen why I should uh, change that. I still earn the respect. Uh, I get uh, uh, colleagues and, 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 and team members to play their part uh, in terms of uh, performing the roles they do. Um, and I don't have to behave differently. Now, I guess uh, everybody comes at leadership from a different perspective, you know, putting all these things together. And, and maybe uh, some of them feel that they've got to kind of scream at people and to behave differently for people to actually do what they're supposed but to do. But that's never been you. No, but that, that, that hasn't been me. And uh, I don't think that I'm any lesser, that I've been any lesser leader. One of the things I sense other leaders fear is that if they look too down to earth and too approachable, uh, people don't fear them. And you are then perceived as weak and you'll be taken advantage of. Has that uh, been your experience? No, that hasn't been, uh, been my experience. and. Uh, you know, as long as uh, one lays out the rules of the game as it were, you know, we are here for a purpose, we are here to achieve this. And as long as one is then able to rally and align the, the, the objectives of, of the teams to the objectives of the organization and of, of himself, uh, then I find that you don't have to then create this culture of fear in people for them to necessarily do what they should be doing. 
uh, that it almost comes natural. There will obviously be, uh, you know, some of the the, the, the odd people in organisations who uh, need to be treated separately. But there are systems and there are ways of dealing with uh, errant people within organisations, and it, it doesn't have to be the leader screaming or shouting at people. And do you feel that um, this is something you would recommend to people out there that? Uh, be true to that persona you have rather than inventing a new type of role for yourself as a leader? I think so. I think people need to, leaders need to be, uh, to be authentic, they need to be themselves. Uh, if you try to be somebody else, I think you lose, you lose the game. At some point, um, it catches up with you. Yeah. The other issue I find around the more authoritarian styles of le leadership is in an era now where there's so much disruption going on from technology and from demographics and changing consumer behavior, um, if you're going to innovate, innovation doesn't come from lines of authority and tight discipline. It comes from free-ranging yes. spirits and, you know, yes. uh, expansive thoughts. Yes. So your style of leadership, it seems to me, cultivates that way better than one where it's very known what your level of authority is, etc., and what you're allowed to say and not say. Yeah. But yeah. this thing of we're all in it together and we are inspiring ourselves to a better future yes. is a different way. Have you found that? I have actually, and um, you know, I have across the different roles that I've uh, that I've held or played. Um, these days, uh, the last sort of. Uh, 10 years or so, I've worked a lot with much younger people than myself. Mm. And they're people full of ideas, very vibrant, um, sort of structures and uh, very tight frameworks don't work, don't go well with them. Mm. And yet you want to uh, get all this energy and this vibe going, you know. And therefore, you know, having sort of open door policies having guys walking in, sitting, sitting down, expressing themselves, you know, um, you know, meeting them on corridors and having conversations there. I just find that uh, this uh, flexibility in leadership is something that is very much part of life today, uh, the life of a leader. And yet if you were aloof or distant yes. or yes. Uh, putting them down frequently, those yes. connections would not happen. Exactly, yeah. Those connections just uh, don't exist in that world. Uh, they keep you at bay, they don't say anything as a consequence. I have your book here, uh, Beyond the Shadows of My Dream. And this threads through the whole book, doesn't it? This persona of yours, that you are actually that rare creature, the humble leader. Um, you seem to have brought it through in all aspects of your life. But it's a life you can look back on with some pride and absolutely. fulfillment. Ab absolutely. You know, but I mean, it may be, Sunny, that uh, you know some of those other uh, behaviors and leaders also work. I, 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 I but, think but within reason they do. Yeah. Um, as long as you understand yeah. where to draw the line. So sometimes forceful behavior, um, much as it, it tends to burn people, it gets things done in a short space of time. The problem is in the long term. Yes. I think negative uh, character traits in leadership yeah. can create short-term results. But in the long run, if you haven't connected with people, if you, they haven't felt inspired by you, if they're not uh, enthusiastically behind you, mm. it falls apart eventually. Yeah. And I, I always say to leaders, you know, you may find that, uh, that pushiness will help you quarter by quarter, but it's not for the ten, next 10 or 20 years. Yes that you create something beyond yourself. Right. And that's why I'm happy to see uh, someone who has exemplified it, that you can achieve great things, but you don't have to become this uh, rock star, um, over forceful uh, leader who does it at anybody else's expense. Yeah, and that is important because my experience is that, uh, you know, uh, people like being treated with respect. Uh, they like uh, being recognized uh, as, as capable individuals um, and anything that you then do which which kind of tries to demean that or diminish that in a sense is something that is going to be resisted. So I, I think it creates a lot of um, unseen you know, cracks. But I think the, the other thing for, for leaders is that uh, for them to really adopt uh, this, this approach uh, they've got to recognize the fact that some people will think of them as, 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 as weaklings or as weak leaders, yeah? 
and they've got to make sure that at the end of the day the objective is still being achieved because that is the only thing that distinguishes you know uh, leaders Indeed. who perform if the results are happening exactly because the results must be seen at the end of the and, day and i think you have to be strong in yourself yeah. um, no matter what people think of you yeah. you know what you stand for and why you do it yeah. and eventually that shines through well martin ojuri ken it's been great to have you here as a gentleman leader Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sunny. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Martin Oduoro Tieno exemplified the softer and more refined skills of leadership long before they became fashionable. Martin is definitely that rare animal, the humble leader. Despite having worked at the highest levels of the private and public sectors, he stays grounded and self-effacing. In high-profile business gatherings, I have observed him equally at ease conversing with waiters and attendants as with his peer CEOs. Even those he has opposed will acknowledge his gentlemanly manner and his unfailing courtesy. Leadership is getting the best out of others, and these days that is not best done by shouting at them. Big ego leadership looks increasingly outmoded in a world that demands a deeper influence. and that rewards innovation and collaboration see you next time on the backseat